gumagawa na po tayo ng prayer na matapos na itong COVID upang kayong nanonood sa inyong mga tibid ay muling babalik sa corporate worship. Aawit ng mga pagpupuri sa Panginoong Diyos. Pupurihin ang Panginoon. Makikinig ng kanyang salita. At iidlip, makakatulog. Hindi, 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 hindi na yung makakatulog. Hindi na yung makakatulog. Alisin nyo na po sa isip natin yan. Just watch wherever you are. Let us worship the Lord together. That Corona, during our time, especially in the Philippines, is um, a, a classy book. It is the in-book. It is the most popular book. If you have a Corona notebook in uh, when you were studying then, we call that Yeyamanin. Okay? You were so popular because of that. Okay? That Corona notebook. Only forever. Okay, Jesus. So, dami sa namin. Ang mga difficulties na to. Nahirapan ka naman. Hindi ka pa nakuto. Mas masakit yun. Ang isayot ang point is God's loving sovereignty. So, pagsamahin natin para mag-resulta ito sa victory. Victory for the Lord, victory for us. Welcome po sa Filipino Christian Church online prayer meeting. Lockdown. Lock and prayer down on our knees. So from our home to your home, magsama-sama po tayong manalangin. At nawa nga po, soon ay magkita-kita na po tayo sa bahay pa ng bahay. Maraming maraming salamat po. Stay safe and God bless us all. do so.
Prayer Ministry presents Thanksgiving Night on the 30th of June, Tuesday at 8 p.m. A special night of prayer meeting all about our thanksgiving and praises. Lockdown, lock in prayer, down on our knees. See you po on Thanksgiving night.
Prayer Ministry presents Thanksgiving Night on the 30th of June, Tuesday at 8 p.m. A special night of prayer meeting all about our thanksgiving and praises. Lockdown, Latin prayer, down on our knees. See you po on Thanksgiving Night.
Ang gabi po sa ating lahat, Saturday night, BS time. Nasa last, ano po tayo, last uh, character ng uh, ating theme for this month na starting well but not ending well in our relationship and service to the Lord. So bago po yung manalangin po muna tayo. Ang mga dakila at banalang mga kapangyarihan sa lahat. Salamat po sa nakarang isang bingo ng iyong pagpapala pagprotekta sa bawat isa po sa amin at uh, higit sa lahat salamat po sa isa na ng pagkakataon na makakarinig kami sa iyo sa pumagitan na iyong salita sa pagkaaral na iyong salita tulutan mo po ama na mabuksan ang aming mga isip ang aming puso ang aming mata at ang aming tainga sa pumagitan na banana espiritu upang matanggap namin ang iyong mensahe sa amin sa bawat isa at sa bawat lahat, at sa aming lahat Hinihiling namin ito na may pasasalama sa pangalan ng aming Diyos at pagkapagligtas na si Yesu Cristo. Ang ating pong special message in song ay magagaling po sa anak ni Brother Joseph and Sister Nelcy, si John Naomi Delilo. Give me a
Okay po, simula natin doon sa unang character. Dalawa po yung characters natin ngayong gabi. Una kay si King Uzziah, also known in uh, the Book of Kings as King Azariah. Pero dahil ang pag-aaralan natin ay yung account niya sa Chronicles, then we use the name Uzziah. So basahin po natin sa 2 Chronicles chapter 26, verses 3 to 5. Uzziah was 16 years old when he became king, and he reigned in Jerusalem 52 years. His mother's name was Jecoliah. She was from Jerusalem. He did what was right in the eyes of the Lord, just as his father Amaziah had done. He sought God during the days of Zechariah, who instructed him in the fear of God. As long as he sought the Lord, God gave him success. So maganda po ang panimula, no? kahit po bata na 16 years old lang. Makadyos ang ama, si King Amaziah. Makadyos ang ina, si Jecoliah. At mayroon pang spiritual advisor, si Zechariah. Ang, ang maganda po sa kanya ay kahit bata siya, he walked in the ways of the Lord. So spiritually, maayos pa yung bansa at maayos din naman siya. So saan siya nag-concentrate mula nung umupo siya as king? Pinalakas niya ang, kanya, ang kanilang military. Yung military strength ang nila, nilakasan niya by, by fortifying all the forts in and out of the city. At the same time, he increased their revenue by developing trade and industry. Siyempre, maraming gastos yung pag-strengthen ng mga forts. So, kailangan ng, uh, ng pera coming from outside and also inside. Kasi, in-increase din niya yung kanilang domestic uh, uh, revenue uh, through agriculture and cattle breeding. So, nakita natin na successful siya militarily, politically, and economically as long as he sought the Lord, which he did. Kaya naging maayos. Okay. So, katulad siya nung naunang tatlong hari, the first three good kings. Uh, lima lang kasi sila sa kingdom of Judah, lima lang sila na good kings. Si uh, King Asa, Jehoshaphat, Zekaya, pang-apat siya. At pang lima yung pag-aaralan natin mamaya. So, like the first three, everything went well sa kanya. At mas uh, lamang pa nga siya eh. Kasi uh, sa panahon ni King uh, Asa, Jehoshaphat at Zekaya, kuminsan, Friends sila nung kabilang uh, kingdom, kuminsan hindi. Pero dito kay King uh, Uzziah, for 52 years, bati sila at peace sila. Kaya nga nakakonsentrate siya sa lahat-lahat ng ito. Uh, on all fronts, maayos ang buhay sa kingdom ni Uzziah. Pero kuminsan, yun ang nagiging problema. When everything goes well, is I think it is a natural human tendency na we let our guards down, medyo nagiging kampante tayo, kasi okay ang lahat eh. Sabi nga dito na kulo tamam, kaya kampante. So, although hindi naman nakomit ni Uzaya yung mga pagkakamali na kinumit yung mga naunang hari sa kanya, something also went wrong dahil nga all was well. Ano kaya yun? Magpatuloy tayo ng pagbasa. 16 to 18. But after Uzziah became powerful, his pride led to his downfall. He was unfaithful to the Lord his God and entered the temple of the Lord to burn incense on the altar of incense. Azariah the priest with 80 other courageous priests of the Lord followed him in. They confronted him and said, It is not right for you, Uzziah, to burn incense to the Lord. That is for the priests the descendants of Aaron, who have been consecrated to burn incense. Leave the sanctuary, for you have been unfaithful, and you will not be honored by the Lord God. So yung sinasabi po dito na pagiging unfaithful niya, it is not because sumamba siya sa ibang Diyos-Diyosan, kundi unfaithful in obeying God's law. It is against God's law to enter the temple and burn incense, kasi nga para sa mga pari lang yun. So, nandun din yung unfaithfulness niya sa kanyang disobedience. Bakit kaya nangyari na he wanted to do what was done or being done only by others as authorized by God's word? Ano kaya yung naging uh, uh, dahilan? Iko-compare natin siya 
sa dalawang biblical personalities na halos pareho yung naging root cause ng kanilang mga downfall. Okay? Pero tignan muna natin, nung pinagalitan siya na nila Azariah, the chief priest, nakinig ba siya? Tignan natin, 21 and 22. King Uzziah, ah, sorry, 19 to uh, 21 pala. Uzziah, who had a censer in his hand, ready to burn incense, became angry. While he was raging at the priests in their presence, before the incense altar in the Lord's temple, leprosy broke out on his forehead. Imbis na makainig siya dahil mali siya, nagalit pa siya. At dun mismo sa oras na nagalit siya, nag-break out yung leprosy, which actually, sa buong uh, Old Testament, ito yung ginagamit yung salatang leprosy, which is chaurahat in Hebrew. It can range from rashes, slight rashes, or severely leprosy. In other words, hindi naging makinis, something went wrong sa skin. At sa kanila, bawal yun. It makes a person unclean when there is something that should not be there on the skin. So we don't really know kung leprosy nga ito o baka mga butlig-butlig, rashes, or we don't know. But yun na nangyari sa kanya, he became unclean. Okay, so dahil doon, when Azariah, the chief priest, and all the other priests looked at him, they saw that he had leprosy on his forehead. So they hurried him out. Indeed, he himself was eager to leave because the Lord had afflicted him. And so King Uzziah had leprosy until the day he died. He lived in a separate house, leprous and excluded from the temple of the Lord. Na alam na ba po natin yung background ng mga tao may uh, leprosy sa sa biblical times. They they will they become social outcasts. Hindi sila pwedeng sumama, normally mabuhay kasama ng pamilya nila. Either they live separately within the city kung hindi na masyadong matindi yung leprosy or outside of the city kung matinding matindi talaga. So that means cut off sila from their family, from their friends. Cut off din sila sa pagsamba sa templo. Kung baga parang walang, para silang nabasura, mga taong binasura na all because of the leprosy. At ito yung nangyari kay uh, King Uzziah agad-agad. Agad-agad kasi matindi yung, yung unfaithfulness niya, yung pagsalangsang niya. Eh. Uh, gusto niyang maging papel, yung papel lang na authorize ang mga, ang mga priests. So, bakit ba nangyari yun? Ano yung naging root cause? Iko-compare natin siya sa dalawang um, biblical characters na katulad niya ay nagkaroon din ng downfall because of this. Okay? Para tayo magkaroon ng clue, basahin natin. Ano ba ang sinabi ng Proverbs chapter 16, verse 18? By now, memory verse na natin to, di ba? Pride comes before destruction, a haughty spirit before a fall. Pride. At ano rin ang sinabi ng Luke chapter 14 verse 11? Um, he who exalts himself, he who exalts himself will be humbled, and he who humbles himself will be exalted. So, sinabi din naman dito sa, sa passage natin, his pride led to his downfall. Ano yung pride doon? Because everything went well sa kanya in all fronts. Tumaas na yung tingin niya sa sarili niya. So ang akala na niya, okay na na total maayos ako, maayos ko na papamunuan ng bansa. Baka pwede ko na rin gawin o papilan yung ginagawa ng mga priests. Natangin sila lamang ang dapat na gumawa. Hindi niya isinaalang-alang na ang papel niya ay political, militarily, politically, Paano ba ang, tingnan natin ha, how can, how can pride uh, bring downfall to a person? Tingnan muna natin, unang-una tingnan natin kay Lucifer. Lucifer is the Latin word for light bearer or morning star. Lucifer was a cherubim. Okay? Uh, sa Bible study natin, ha, sa discussion sa Bible study, i-develop natin yan, yung cherubim, archangel, seraphim. But for now, he was a cherubim. He was the most beautiful and most intelligent. And he was on top of his rank as a cherubim. So, 
na nagrebelde siya sa Panginoon. Sa natin mababasa na, na, na nagrebelde siya? Sa Ezekiel chapter 28 verse 17, basahin lang natin. Your heart became proud on account of your beauty and you corrupted your wisdom because of your splendor. So I threw you to the earth. I made you a spectacle before the kings. Hindi lamang kay Ezekiel. Sa Daniel chapter 4, sa Isaiah chapter 14 verses 12 to 14, ito naman mismo yung sinabi niya bilang patunay na naging proud nga siya. How you have fallen from heaven, O morning star, son of the dawn. You have been cast down to earth, you who once laid low the nations. You said in your heart, take note ha, you said in your heart, meron siyang sinabing limang I will. You said in your heart, I will ascend to heaven. I will raise my throne above the stars of God. I will sit enthroned on the mount of assembly, on the utmost heights of the sacred mountain. I will ascend above the tops of the most of the clouds. I will make myself like the most high. I will make myself like the most high. Big words. Ito yung ito yung napakatinding pagrebelde na ginawa ni ni Lucifer. Kaya na ipinatapon siya sa lupa, actually under the earth pinalta ng pangalan ng pangalan niya. Now, alam naman natin sa Bible, your name describes you, your personality, your character. So, hindi na siya light bearer or morning star. Naging kaaway na siya ng Diyos. So, the Lord changed his name to Satan. Now, Satan comes from the Greek word Satanas, which means enemy. So, sa Tagalog pala, tsaka sa Greek pareho, no? Satanas, naging enemy na. Why? On account of his beauty and intelligence. Tumaas na masyado ang pang, pagtingin niya sa sarili niya. Naging kampante sobra. What about the other personality? Si Nebuchadnezzar. Nebuchadnezzar was the king of Babylon. Anak siya ni Nabopolassar na siyang nagpasimula ng kingdom of Babylon. Ang naunang kingdom worldwide was Assyria of which Babylon was part. Nung nagrebelde ang Babylon against Assyria, ang ama niya ang nanguna sa lahat ng mga battles. At siya bilang anak, as he was being groomed by his father, siya ay pinag-aral. And he was educated in the military and in uh, government administration. So naging mahusay at maayos si Nebuchadnezzar dahil sa kanyang pagiging uh, um, edukado at anak ng hari. So, saan naman natin makikita na yung magandang naging kalagayan niya sa buhay ay nag-lead din sa pride? Ito yung sinabi niya sa Daniel chapter 4, verses 29 to 32. 12 months later, as the king was walking on the roof of the royal palace of Babylon, he said, Is not this the great Babylon I have built as the royal residence by my mighty power? and for the glory of my majesty? The words were still on his lips when a voice came from heaven. This is what is decreed for you, King Nebuchadnezzar. Your royal authority has been taken from you. You will be driven away from the people and you will live with wild animals. You will eat grass like cattle. Actually, ang nangyari po sa kanya, ay, ito ay isang uh, mental derangement na, or psychological derangement na ang tawag ay lycanthropy from the Greek word lycus which means wolf so in, when you have uh, uh, lycanthropy a man becomes and thinks like a wolf and acts like a wolf and eats like a wolf that's why he ate grass nakita natin sobrang ibinaba siya ng Panginoon sa sobrang pagmamataas he who exalts himself will be humbled down ibinaba din siya ng, ng uh, Panginoon. So, sa nakita natin sa kanila, kasama ni ni Uzziah, because everything went well, napakadami naging achievements, pumasok yung pride sa puso at isipan nila. So, pride was the underlying cause of their fall. Pero ano ang naging uh, ending? Si Lucifer, he was hurled down from heaven to hell. Si Nebuchadnezzar, he was restored after seven years. Hinambol lang siya ng Panginoon. Pero si King Uzziah, 
what happened to him? Napakalungkot din na nangyari kay King Uzziah. Basahin natin kung ano nangyari sa kanya. Sa 2 Chronicles chapter 26, verse 23. Basahin po natin, 2 Chronicles chapter 26, verse 23. Uzziah rested with his fathers and was buried near them in a field for burial that belonged to the kings. For people said, he had leprosy. He was buried near his fathers. In other words, he was not buried in the king's cemetery. Kasi nga, unclean siya eh. Until his death, hindi na naumalis sa kanya yung leprosy. So, hindi siya considered na ilibing doon sa king's cemetery. He was remembered for being a leper up to the time of his death. How sad. Ang dami niyang ginawang maganda. Ang dami niyang inayos sa kanyang uh, kingdom. If he had only been grateful to God for all the achievements, hindi sana umakit yung pride sa ulo niya. Di ba? Remember, ano sinabi natin? Ano sinabi ng uh, passage kanina? Binasa natin, 2 Chronicles chapter 26, verse 5. As long as he sought the Lord, God gave him success. So sana nung naiisip na niya na, na uh, siguro pwede na ako pumasok ng, ng templo, siguro pwede ko na papilan yung mga ano na mga, mga priesto tali na masyado nang mataas ang, ang aking na-achieve sa kingdom. If he continued to seek the Lord, the Lord would have told him, mali yun. The Lord would have corrected him. Kasi lagi ko nga sinasabi, di ba, at alam naman nating lahat na hindi tayo perfect. So, may mga mali tayong kaisipan, may mga mali tayong mga thoughts, pero kung lagi nadadala kay Lord, lahat yung mga mali na yung bago pa magsima, magawa, bago pa magsimulang mamuo sa puso natin, isipan natin, mahahatak na tayong uh, palayo doon sa mga wrong thoughts na yun. So, mga kapatid, once again, nakita natin, ha? when all things, when things are well with us in life, tapos samahan pa ng mga achievements, Katulad ni Nebuchadnezzar at saka ni Lucifer, masyado nang tumataas ang tingin natin sa sarili natin. And the only thing and the only way to have it checked is to always seek the Lord, to always confer with the Lord, to always speak to the Lord through prayer. Kasi doon tayo masasabihan ng Panginoon. Huwag na huwag natin pababayaan yun para hindi tayo matulad kay King Uzziah. It could have been prevented if he had chosen to continue to seek the Lord. So, yun ang ating leksyon na matututunan kay King Uzziah. Huh? What about si King Josiah, the last of the five good kings and the youngest of all? He was only eight nung maging hari siya. Okay? Basahin natin si King Josiah sa 2 Chronicles chapter 34, verses 1 to 5. Josiah was eight years old when he became king. And he reigned in Jerusalem 31 years. He did what was right in the eyes of the Lord and walked in the ways of his father David, not turning aside to the right or to the left. In the eighth year of his reign, so the uh, Bali 16 years old, na siya, na, he started, while he was still young, he started to seek the God of his father David. And then in his twelfth year, which means 20 years old na siya. So, after 4 years of seeking the Lord, after 4 years of spiritually soaking himself with the things of the Lord, with the word of the Lord, at the age of 20, in his 12th year, he began to purge Judah and Jerusalem of high places, Asherah poles, carved idols, and cast images. And under his direction, the altars of the Baals were torn down. He cut to pieces the incense altars that were above them and smashed the Asherah poles, the idols, and the images. This he broke to pieces and scattered over the graves of those who had sacrificed to them. He burned the bones of the priests on their altars. So he purged Judah and Jerusalem. Okay. So, uh, nakita natin na after nung uh, Matthew 6.33 principle, seek first the kingdom of God. So all these things, sinimulan niya, and the Lord gave him success. Now, ang maganda pa kay Josiah, unlike the first four kings na nag-concentrate lang doon sa Jerusalem, siya, buong bansa, 
Pagpatuloy tayo sa verses 6 and 7. In the towns of Manasseh, Ephraim, and Simeon, as far as Naphtali, and in the ruins around them, he tore down the altars and the Asherah poles, and crushed the idols to powder, and cut to pieces all the incense altars throughout Israel. Then he went back to Jerusalem. So nung naayos niya lahat lahat yung buong bansa, from the northern part, the, the, the farthest in the north is uh, Naphtali, yung tribo ni Naphtali. And the farthest to the south is yung tribo ni Simeon. So lahat yan, hindi na siya nag-concentrate sa Jerusalem. So napakaganda nung ginawang uh, campaign ni uh, King Josiah. You see what happens when we are soaked in the Spirit of the Lord, in the Word of the Lord, in the ways of the Lord, in the things of the Lord. Nandudun talaga na buong pagkatao natin na nahahawakan ng Panginoon, kaya nagiging maayos ang ating pag-iisip at ang ating mga desisyon na pinatunayan ni, ni King Josiah. Hindi lang yun. Basahin natin sa verse 8. In the 18th year of Josiah's reign, so at this point in time, 26 years old na siya, in the 18th year, to purify the land and the temple, he sent Shaphan with Joah to repair the temple of the Lord his God. That verse 8 and then 14 and 15, while they were bringing out the money that had been taken into the temple of the Lord, Hilkiah the priest found the book of the law of the Lord that had been given through Moses. So ito yung Torah. Hilkiah said to Shaphan the secretary, I have found the book of the law in the temple of the Lord. And then he gave it to Shaphan. Ano ang nangyari? Verses 19 to 21. Binasa nila kay King Josiah. When the king heard the words of the law, he tore his robes. He gave these orders to Hilkiah. Go and inquire of the Lord for me and for the remnant in Israel and Judah about what is written in this book that has been found. Great is the Lord's anger that is poured out on us because our fathers have not kept the word of the Lord. They have not acted in accordance with all that is written in the book. So, ano, ano ibig niya sabihin dito? Dahil, nung, kung hindi pa niya pinaayos yung templo at hindi nila nakita itong book na ito, hindi pa niya malalaman na nadapakadami pa lang pagsasalangsang na ginawa ng mga, ano niya, mga ancestors niya. At nakasulat doon sa salita ng Diyos na yung blessings ni Lord will not come upon those who are disobedient. What, what will come upon them were curses. O ipaliwanag ko lang ha, na yung curses hindi yung curse na sa pagkakaalam natin. Sa Bible kasi, ang sinabi ng Panginoon sa Deuteronomy, If uh, you want blessings, you obey the Lord. As long as you stay in the Lord's way, and do things according to God's word, the blessings will come upon you if you stay on the side of the Lord. But if you disobey, you remove yourself from the side of the Lord, you go to the other side, then you don't get the blessings. What you get are curses which are the opposite of blessings. Kung hindi blessings, curses. Kasi kung hindi obedience, disobedience. So ano nangyari? Siyempre curses ang makukuha niya because of disobedience. Bakit? Kasi hindi nila inintindi yung book of the law. They did not observe the book of the law. Itinago lang isinantabi. So they did not operate according to the word of God. They operated according to the word of the enemy. So instead of blessings, curses. Kaya pinunit niya yung robe niya kasi alam niya na kung ano yung nakasulat, mangyayari. So inutusan ni Josiah, Si, uh, si Hilkiah, pinapunta niya kay Prophetess Hulda. At uh, ano ang sinabi sa kanya ni Prophetess Hulda? Okay. So sa, sa, sa nakita natin na pagbabalik loob nila at sa desire ni Josiah na may balik loob ang mga tao, ano ang sinabi ng Prophet sa kanya? Prophet um, Hulda, verses 27 and 28. This is what the God of Judah who sent you to inquire. This is what the Lord, the God of Israel says concerning the words you heard. Because your heart was responsive and you humbled yourself before God when you heard what he spoke against this place and its people 
and because you humbled yourself before me and tore your robes and wept in my presence, I have heard you, declares the Lord. Now I will gather you to your fathers and you will be buried in peace. Your eyes will not see all the disaster I am going to bring on this place and on those who live here. That's why he tore his robes. Kasi alam niya na kung ano yung sinabi ng Diyos, matutupad yun eh. And siyempre, he felt sad and he felt bad for his people. Now, unlike Hezekiah, lolo niya si Hezekiah, unlike Hezekiah, his grandfather, nakita naman natin sa last week's lesson, di ba, na si Hezekiah, nung sinabi na lahat ng ito na mangyayari, it will not happen in your time. Yung lolo niya, di ba, naging parang selfish and caring kasi nga it will not happen in his time. Unlike his grandfather, napakaganda ng mga uh, Napakaganda ng puso nitong si, si Hezekiah. Ano yung ginawa niya in response to malaman niya na ito din mangyayari, although it will not happen in his time? Magpatuloy tayo. Verses 29 to 33. Then the king called together all the elders of Judah in Jerusalem. He went up to the temple of the Lord with the men of Judah, the people of Jerusalem, the priests and the Levites, all the people from the least to the greatest. He read in their hearing all the words of the Book of the Covenant, which had been found in the Temple of the Lord. The king stood by his pillar and renewed the covenant in the presence of the Lord to follow the Lord and keep his commands, regulations, and decrees with all his heart and all his soul and to obey the words of the covenant written in this book. When he had everyone in Jerusalem and Benjamin pledged themselves to it, the people of Jerusalem did this in accordance with the covenant of God, the God of their fathers. Josiah removed all the detestable idols from all the territory belonging to the Israelites, and he had all who were present in Israel serve the Lord their God. Now hear this. As long as he lived, they did not fail to follow the Lord, the God of their fathers. So kinarir ni Josiah na sa buong buhay niya, tutulungan niya, ililig niya sila in obedience to the Lord. He faithfully led his people to obey the Lord para hindi na, para mabawasan man lamang yung, mag, yung time. Kasi kung naka-appoint na at this time ay mangyayari yun, at least habang buhay pa siya for as long as he can, he wanted to lead them in obedience para humaba yung kaayusan ng buhay nila in obedience to the Lord. Humaba yung kaayusan ng buhay nila with blessings coming from the Lord. Such was uh, Josiah. As long as he lived, they did not fail to follow the Lord, the God of their fathers. Now, unlike the other kings na nauna sa kanya, si King Asa, Jehoshaphat, at uh, the Hezekiah, wala naman siya mga malalaking kasalanan o mga wrong decisions that led to his fall. At hindi rin naman kayabangan o pride katulad dito sa nauna si King uh, Uzziah. So, ano ang nangyari? Posible pala na militarily, economically, religiously, wala kang maling nagawa, pero posible rin pala na bumagsak, masira yung magandang napasimulan. At ano yun? Unfortunately, and perhaps regrettably, siya ang naging dahilan kung bakit maaga siyang namatay. He wanted to do so many things for his people to make it up do sa kanilang mga hindi maganda nang, nangyari because of his ancestors. But because of something that he did, maaga tuloy siyang namatay. Hindi niya na-accomplish yun for as long as he could sana. Because he died at the age of 39. He started all these spiritual, political, military, everything reforms at the age of 20. And only after 19 years, he died at the very young age of 39. Ano ba nangyari? Mahirap sagutin, pero tignan natin kung ano yung nangyari. Okay, basahin natin sa chapter 35, verses 20 and 21. After all this, meaning after nung lahat ng magandang ginawa ni Josiah, ito na ang nagsimula ng kanyang uh, hindi magandang uh, ending. After all this, when Josiah had set the temple in order, 
Neko, king of Egypt, went up to fight at Carchemish on the Euphrates and Josiah marched out to meet him in battle. O, explain pa ng konti ha, sa history. Carchemish was part of the Assyrian Empire, which was the empire ruling at that point in time. Uh, nakita natin kanina, di ba, na nag nga ang Babylon, yung ama ni Nebuchadnezzar, si Nabopolos. Babylon was under uh, Assyria. Nag-rebelde sila. And it was this battle of Carchemish na naging decisive. Kaya nagkaroon ng shift ng power. Yung Assyria natalo sa battle of Carchemish. Kaya ang nangibabaw ngayon, yung Babylonian uh, Empire. Pero at this point in time, hindi pa siya talo. Kaya nga si Neko, King of Egypt, pupunta sa Assyria para tulungan ng Assyria to battle against Babylon. Now, alam naman natin sa, sa mapa, no? yung Egypt is south ng Israel at yung uh, Assyrian Empire, especially yung Carchemish, ay northeast. So, pagpunta niya from south to northeast, dadaan siya ng Judah. Madadaanan niya itong kingdom ni Josiah. So, ano ang nangyari? Patuloy tayo. Josiah marched out to meet him in battle, but Neko sent messengers to him saying, What quarrel is there between you and me, O king of Judah? It is not you I am attacking at this time, but the house with which I am at war, meaning uh, ang, uh, Babylon. God has told me to hurry, so stop opposing God, who is with me, or he will destroy you. So, yun ang sinasabi ni, may sense naman yung sinasabi ni King Neko, di ba? He, he will go to war against Babylon to help Assyria. So, walang kinalaman doon si King Josiah. Ito yung parte na hindi kasi maliwanag sinabi sa Bible kung bakit. At kahit ano yung basahin ko, kahit saan ako magbasa, wala ako makitang uh, uh, article o kahit man lang historical background na nagsasabi na why did he go out to march against King Neko? Eh, hindi nga naman siya yung kalaban. At sinabihan na siya ni King Neko na hindi ikaw ang nilulusog ko. At sinabi ng Diyos sa akin na who is with me na ito yung gagawin ko. So stop opposing God. Meaning stop opposing me. Now, is it possible na dahil siya ay mananampalatayan ng Panginoon at itong si Neko ay hindi, is it possible na baka naisip niya na oh, binablock mo lang ako. Hindi totoo yan na kasama mo ang Diyos. Hindi totoo that I will go opposing God. Ang problema lang dito, kung sana si Josiah ay kahit hindi niya gusto pakinggan si Neko, kung di na lang niya sana kay Lord ito, then nalaman niya na tama pala si King Neko. At siya yung mali. Pero dahil hindi siya nakinig, ano ang nangyari? Hindi siya nakinig at hindi niya dinala kay Lord to verify, to confirm, ano ang nangyari. Patuloy tayo, verses 22 to 24. Josiah, however, would not turn away from him, but disguised himself to engage him in battle. So, uh, nag nagdisguise siya na hindi siya yung hari. Kasi nga sinabihan na siya na, na wag mo ko labanan. He would not listen to what Neko had said at God's command, but went to fight him on the plain of Megiddo. Archers shot King Josiah, and he told his officers, Take me away, I am badly wounded. So they took him out of his chariot, put him in the other chariot he had, and brought him to Jerusalem, where he died. He was buried in the tombs of his fathers, and all Judah and Jerusalem mourned for him. Kung, kung nakinig sana siya kay Neko, or kung hindi man siya nakinig kay Neko at dinala niya yung kay Lord, this would not have happened. Nagtupad sana yung pangarap niya na for as long as he lives, hanggat buhay siya up to his old age, tutulungan niya at tuturoan niya ang kanyang mga tao na sumamba sa Diyos lamang. Hindi natin alam. Actually, isa to sa bucket list ko eh. Bucket, English, B-U-C-K-E-T, at saka bucket, Tagalog, B-A-K-I-T. Isa to sa bucket list ko na pagdating ko sa ito, talaga tatanong ko kay Lord na bakit hindi siya nakinig. Ano yung motibo niya? para labanan si Neko ay sinasansala na siya. We really don't know. Pero ang, ang root nito is, if we don't take things to the Lord, we being imperfect could be wrong. And indeed, 
he was wrong. Nag-disguise pa siya para hindi mahalata kasi sinansala na nga siya. And so what happened? He died at the age of 39, not a bata. So tumigil yung revival. Kasi ano ang uh, sabi dito? For as long as he lived, they did not fail to follow the Lord, the God of their fathers. Kasi ka nagsisimula pa lang sila magbalik log sa Panginoon. Eh. And of course, it takes time to undo and then redo. It will take time. Kaya for as long as he lived, he had to show them the way of obedience. Pero dahil hindi pa, kumbaga sa bata, hindi pa sila mature, namatay na siya agad at the age of 39. Ano ang nangyari? Just 33 years after he died. Sunod-sunod. Puro mga wickedness ang nangyari sa kingdom of Judah. So, napadala sila sa Babylonian captivity. Just 33 years after namatay si, si Josiah at the age of 39. He, he would have been 72 at, at that age. So sana naisad-sad na, no? Na naging maayos yung buhay nila. Pero nakat short yung magandang buhay. Kasi nakat short din yung buhay niya as uh, their king. Ang, except for this one unexplainable mistake ni Josiah, he was a faithful king. He was a good king. Actually, he holds the record of being the youngest king at the age of eight and being the last good king of Judah. Josiah showed a very good example of seeking the Lord for the right direction, which he did sa pasimula, and seeking God's word through the book of the law to stay in the right direction, in the right way. He did. Kaya lang because of this one unexplainable mistake, maaga siyang nawala. Maaga siyang kinuha ng Panginoon. Sana po mga kapatid, ma unlike uh, King Uzziah na naging proud, uh, and unlike King uh, Josiah na naging uh, presumptuous siguro kasi pinresume niya na hindi tama yung ginawa ni Neko. Sana po huwag natin silang tularan. Sana po all the days of our life na we will always consult with the Lord. Whether logical or hindi, whether acceptable culturally or hindi, whatever it is, with or without achievements, dapat ang doon tayo lagi nakahawak sa Panginoon. Kasi yun lang ang sure way to success. Because the Lord is perfect. So as long as we seek the Lord, He will give us success. So sana po yun ang ating uh, yun ang maiwan sa isip natin. No? So lahat ng napag-aralan natin ng mga, mga kings, eh, including, Isaac, uh, including Isaac, who started well but did not end well with the Lord. Sana po tularan natin si Joseph. Diba kaya inuna natin si Joseph? He started well with the Lord up to the time of his death. He was doing well because he was always seeking the Lord. So sana po yun ang gawin natin, ha? Mga kapatid, kasi this is the end of our theme uh, for this month. Kasi next month, iba naman yung theme natin. Hindi ko muna sasabihin kung ano, pero New Testament tayo starting July. Bago po tayo magwakas, isa na naman po ang awitin galing po kay John Naomi Derilo.
So ano nga po, eh, i-recall lang natin na ah, yung mga kings, ano yung mga naging mga pagkakamali nila, mga unholy alliances, pride, uh, complacency, at duke Isaac, deception. So ito yung mga naging hindi magandang ending at, at kay Josiah, hindi nga natin ma-explain eh, dahil hindi nga maliwanag sa Bible. So sana po iwasan natin ang lahat ng iyon ha, para magpatuloy na maayos sa ating buhay kasama ang Panginoon. Uh, magsarap po tayo sa panalangin. Amang Diyos na may makapangyarihan sa lahat. Salamat po, Lord, sa example nitong uh, mga kings na to together with Isaiah na nakita po namin na uh, how beneficial it is for us to always stay cleaved to you, clinging to you, consulting you in everything, Father. Kahit hindi po kami king, kahit hindi mataas ang kalagay namin sa buhay, Katulad nga like kung uh, sinasabi sa mga Bible studies that there will never come a time that we will never need you. We will always need you, Father. So sana po laging tumimo yun sa aming mga puso at saka isipan. Salamat po sa mensahe mo sa gabing ito. Sa mensahe at saka sa warning through these characters. At uh, ikaw lamang po ang patuloy na malugod sa mga pag-aaral na to for your glory and for our benefit. We praise you and thank you in Jesus' name. So, mga kapatid, next week, do sa, uh, hindi tayo character studies. Magpapahinga muna tayo sa mga characters at aalis muna tayo sa Old Testament. Mag New Testament naman tayo. So, surprise next week ko ano yung ating magiging lessons. Okay? So, uh, until next week, let's stay safe, happy, humble, and faithful in the Lord. Magandang gabi sa ating lahat. Blessings. Prayer Ministry presents Thanksgiving Night on the 30th of June, Tuesday at 8 p.m. A special night of prayer meeting all about our Thanksgiving and praises. Lockdown, lock in prayer, down on our knees. See you po on Thanksgiving night.